up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. All right, check it out, y'all. It's getting bad out here in Hollywood, man. It's getting real, real nervous time for a lot of these Hollywood actors and writers coming on the other side of the strike. Uh, they expected things to be way different than the way they are right now, okay? You can see on this headline by Bloomberg, uh, the strikes are over, but Hollywood isn't back to normal. And yeah, I don't think it's ever going to go back to normal or back to what Hollywood once was. I think that era is over. I already said it. I think it is dead. And there's a new, you know, way of doing business in the film industry that's going to sprout up and come out of that. But I think the old ways are over. And there may be still some people trying to keep old Hollywood propped up like, you know, Bernie's weekend at Bernie's. You know, we're going to limp it around, you know, hold it up. Oh, yeah. Hollywood is still here. There are going to be a lot of people that are going to do that. But in my opinion, I think this thing is absolutely dead. It's changed. All right. What T calls it is. Uh, like a species. He said that yesterday on the DA's office. We was talking to Dante from Verbal Riot. Uh, T calls like Hollywood a species, uh, the film industry and the box office and everything. It's a species that's evolving and it's evolving into something else. And that's due to the fact that we got video games coming in, taking up some market share in entertainment. We got YouTubers, obviously. We got anime. We got a thousand and one different entertainment options. Hollywood no longer has the vice grip that it once had. And uh, you can see this uh, headline here or this uh, tagline Everybody was supposed to get back to work once the two strikes concluded last year, but the hangover has been longer than anyone anticipated. And remember, we saw this already. Yeah, Jerry Seinfeld said the film business is over. Uh, film doesn't occupy the pinnacle in the cultural hierarchy any longer. And it doesn't. It doesn't. Like, we were also saying this, like back in the day, you would go to the movies. That was your way of entertainment. People used to go to the movies. The theaters would be packed. The lobbies would be packed. Or if you couldn't afford to go to a movie that weekend, you might have, you know, say, hey, let's make it a blockbuster night. Everybody go, used to go as a family, everybody go out to the blockbuster, pick out a movie apiece, mom, dad, sis, bro. And we got four movies. We're going to watch them all over the weekend. We're going to eat popcorn. We're going to hang out as a family. It's a great way to get together and all of that. That's gone. All right. The cultural hierarchy is no longer going to Blockbuster and hanging out as a family or going to the movie theaters and hanging out as a family. I don't even know who's going to movies. I go because I'm a movie fan. And I think folks in my generation and maybe some millennials, but you're talking about Gen Z. You're talking about, I guess, Gen Alpha is the next generation. They're into YouTube. They're into streaming. They're into their social media they're more into video games and anime and none of that stuff is hollywood and so yeah hollywood is getting its ass kicked right now in a lot of ways yeah you can see right here on the uh, april box office we discussed this as well all right only 155 million dollars has been made thus far for the films that released in april all right april as of april 28th so we only got like what two more days and that's it i mean this thing is going to have a major drop you know, over 60, 70 percent year over year from 2023 to 2024, it's going to be a disaster. And then we had discussed this as well. Nothing's coming up in the pipeline. There's nothing that's that interesting coming up for the summer months. Summer starts next week in terms of the summer movie season. That's May, June, July, August. The summer movie season is here. And I don't think anybody's excited for anything besides Deadpool and Wolverine. I mean, it's going to be a hot mess, man. But let me take you out of this. Yeah, this is how bad it's getting. Even the A-listers are starting to struggle, okay? This headline on Deadline, uh, Hollywood contraction hits star TV packages. It's a head scratcher. Yeah, so even your top of the line movie stars, TV stars, these guys are getting hit. These guys can't get their projects off the ground. It is absolutely incredible. And if they're struggling, then you know for damn sure there has been a giant shift in the evolution of Hollywood and the evolution of entertainment. Things will not be ever what they were before. That's why I say Hollywood is completely dead, at least the Hollywood we knew. And it may morph into something else that they will call Hollywood. But the way that they've done business in the film industry is about to change. OK, the mood is absolutely about to change. Let's go ahead and check this out. After the end of the strikes, agents, managers, and producers quickly moved in to assemble high-profile packages to take out in what was expected to be a frothy marketplace following six months of inactivity. But while there have been a few bidding wars and big sales with a couple of others pending, the level of demand has not been what many anticipated. The biggest casualty of the tight market? Packages with A-list stars attached. Yeah, and when you sit back and think about it, and I had to think about it, too. It's like, why aren't people checking with these A-list stars? You know, 
Like, you figured these guys were the ones that were going to be fine coming out on the other end of the strike. Like, okay, the smaller actors, all right, all of those uh, normal Joes walking up and down in the hot-ass sun on the picket line, yeah, they're going to struggle. But the A-listers should be all right. But now we're seeing, yeah, uh, the A-listers aren't even getting the work. And But when you sit back and think about it, with everything getting tight, these budgets getting tight, it's like, yo, man, we can't afford to put on these A-listers. They asking for too much money. They want way too much bread for what it is that we're going to offer. And you don't necessarily need a big name actor to push something these days. Oh, what you need is a good series and you need just the right type of marketing and you need it to catch fire. You need it to go viral. You need people to talk about it. And just because it has an A-list star in it, that don't mean nothing. That don't mean shit. If you don't have a thing that's going, bar think of Squid Game, all right? Think of how big Squid Game is. Did you know anybody in Squid Game before Squid Game dropped? Of course you didn't. You didn't know anybody. It's a show from Korea. You had no idea about anything that was going on with Squid Game, but everybody watched it. Why? It was simply because, number one, it was a well-made show, but then, number two, it was compelling. It was interesting. Like, hmm, man, what would I do? You know, the questions that start getting kicked around. What would I do if I was in this similar situation? And, man, I wonder, I wonder how this whole thing is going to play itself out. All this, like, life and death struggle. And, I mean, it was, it was fascinating. It was riveting. It kept you pinned into your chair. You probably binged the whole thing. I know I did. I just binged it. Eight, nine episodes, whatever it was, pew, just went right through them. And a lot of people did that. And that's the reason why A-list stars, people are seeing this shit and they're like, I don't need an A-list star. I need a great idea. I need a great concept. And hopefully keep that budget down. Okay. And you got an A-list star on there. Yeah, the A-list stars are going to have to start taking pay cuts, in my opinion. So this thing is going to be interesting. Uh, this has been such a head-scratcher, uh, one agent said about the situation. Agencies are keeping record of all the star packages that went out and failed to draw interest over the past few months, despite the level of talent that has included Oscar and Emmy winners and nominees in at front or behind the camera, stars of blockbuster movies and iconic TV series, and in a couple of instances, famous IP, the total now exceeds 20. Yeah, so again, none of this shit is working, all right? None of this means nothing to people anymore, even famous IPs, because people have seen famous IPs go belly up. You see all of the stuff going over there with Marvel? It's like, hey, man, it's a famous IP, made money in the last, you know, five or six years, but people have checked out. Maybe I don't want to be a part of that this time around. I think, again, the landscape is changing. It's very, very interesting how things are moving right now, how things are adjusting on the fly almost, you know. And, and like I said, when it comes to the current generation of people that are your next consumers, Gen Z, Gen Alpha, think about it. They care about shit that's going viral. And that's the thing. None of this crap right here, none of this uh, Oscar and Emmy winners and uh, stars of blockbuster movies, not necessarily even famous IP will make something go viral. What's going to make it go viral is, oh, everybody's talking about it. Oh, what an interesting concept. Oh, look at Squid Game. Oh, what would you do in this situation? And then all of the crazy stuff that happened around that show, that's what makes it go viral. That would, that's what makes it a conversation point that a lot of people want to chime in on. And then you feel like, damn, I'm getting left out of the conversation because I haven't seen Squid Game. I guess I got to go and watch it. You know, again, things like that. It, it can be it can happen with all of this. OK, all of this can happen um, with a famous IP and with the Oscar and Emmy winners and all that. All of that stuff can go viral, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's the thing that's making it go viral. What's making it go viral is the content itself, making good shows, writing good scripts. It absolutely works. Doesn't always work. All right. In some cases, you see great movies that just don't catch on. But again, I think what they're starting to do is rethink, OK, are we going to spend a whole lot of money on Oscar and Emmy winners and stars of blockbuster movies and iconic TV series? Are we going to spend a lot of money on that and then watch it all go up in smoke? You know, like what would be the point of it? Money is so tight everywhere. These are huge investments, massive packages, and a lot of them are not necessarily the best return on investment, one agent said, noting that streamers have not seen upticks in subscribers based on those expensive originals. Exactly. I'm not, you know, subscribing to this uh, Netflix or whatever it is, uh, or, you know, whatever other Disney Plus, HBO Max, you know, uh, Peacock, Apple. I'm not subscribing to those just because you put one show on there with one big star. That's not enough to get me in. 
You know, you got to put a lot of content out there for me to go and say, okay, I'm going to subscribe to this. It has to be a lot of good quality content. It's got to be some variety to the content, something that I might, okay, if I don't necessarily rock with this, maybe there's something else on here that I can watch. That's what you have to do in order to get these subscription numbers up. The most game-changing series which have driven up subscribers for platforms like Stranger Things, Game of Thrones, House of Dragon, and Reacher have not been star vehicles but star makers. Yeah, because, see, again, these shows right here, you know, that did the job, but it wasn't because of the movie stars that were attached to it. You didn't know anybody from Stranger Things. You barely knew anybody from Game of Thrones. You might have known Sean Bean. That's about it. All right? And then Reacher, you know, again, Alan Richardson wasn't necessarily a household name. He is now. But again, that's what they said. They've been star makers Uh, with budgets cut across the board amid economic headwinds. There is fear. Executives are scared to spend that kind of money. Another rep said they just don't want to be the first one to jump in and spend if they don't need to. And the reality is, is they don't. They don't need to spend that kind of money uh, on some of these things. According to the rep, probably factoring into that newfound resistance is the massive success of a lower cost acquisition like Suits, which thoroughly outperformed star driven series that cost 100 million plus per season, which has made streamers even more reluctant to spend big on packages. Uh, There's a little bit more rationality in the market. One buyer said uh, packages used to come through and it used to be Netflix will buy it or now it's Apple will buy it, but we're seeing things go out that don't get any buyers, which is unusual. That hasn't happened in a while. Uh, As to why, I think that it's capacity and willingness to pay expectations. What would have been a straight-to-series is now maybe development, the person said. Yeah, they're thinking things through now, okay? This is basically telling me that these studios are being a little bit more thoughtful as to how they're spending their bread. They're not just saying, all right, here's money here. Let's throw money out there. Let's just gather up all of these big time TV series with all of these stars attached and all of that. Let's do all of that and let's go out there and make some money. And then they see that shit don't tur- turn into money. And they're like, all right, man, uh, maybe, maybe we should just let us develop this for a little bit before we just take it straight to series. You know, and again, I, I believe, honestly, the strikes, the strikes made all of these studios stop and think, hmm. All right, let's pause. Pause. We got time to think now. Nothing's going on. They want to strike. Let them strike. We're going to sit back and we're going to strategize and game plan for the next iteration of Hollywood coming on the other side of the strikes. How are we going to be running business? And see, that's the whole thing. That's why I say the strikes, it didn't hurt the studios because in the long run, studios is going to be just fine. What it did is it hurt the talent. All right. It hurt the actors. It hurt the writers. It hurt, it hurt everybody. The behind the scenes folks. All right. The below the line workers. That's all the strikes did was hurt them. The the studio like we'll just push projects back to next year. They've done that for a lot of movies. We'll still you know finish these things up. But we're going to try to figure out how to make money out of Hollywood because we've been losing money, especially last year during 2023 when the box office just completely tanked. You got to start thinking like they oh, man, damn, things ain't going so hot, you know. And again, I think the strikes really helped kind of like shape their way of thinking. And speaking of strikes, we're not over, or at least we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, IATSE, right? They got their contract coming up. And now their talks have shifted to the toughest issues, wages, all right, AI and residuals. So once again, we talking bread, we talking money. And IATSE, they were on the outside looking in last year. They were out there on the picket line trying to support the actors and the writers, trying to help everybody get back to work, you know, but they didn't have a contract dispute. It was the writers and the actors. And these guys, IATSE, they took it in the shorts the hardest because it's not like they had any control over what was happening. It's not like they could go out there and say, okay, we need to change this. We need to do this. Hey, uh, union rep, go out there and say this, say that. They couldn't apply any pressure to anybody. All right. And that was the worst thing about it is that Yahtzee just had to sit on the sidelines and lose houses, just like all the other writers and actors that lost work and houses. They had to lose it and they didn't even have anything to do with it. But see, now they do. And now the question is, how hard are they going to push for the wages and the residuals and all of that? How hard are they going to make sure it's like, no, 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 we want our bread. You guys kept us out last year. You know, we lost money. We lost houses. We lost our retirements and our savings. We lost a lot. We're looking to get some get back. Well, how much are they going to push for this? Because if this thing goes all the way through and they don't get a a deal that they want. Oh, they're going on strike. (laughs) I have no doubt in my mind about that. They are going to be on strike. I just saw somebody left a comment um, on one of my older videos. 
You know, basically saying, yeah, F around and find out. Basically, that's what he was saying. All right. Said, we are going to get ours. You know, he was an IOTC member. Said, yeah, we getting ours. Y'all can fuck around and y'all can find out. Or y'all can make a deal that's going to be beneficial to all. But see, look, there again, they're dealing with the AMPTP, all right? They're dealing with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. That's who they're negotiating with, the same as WGA and SAG Astra. So these guys are going to be fine. That's the whole point. That's the problem. These guys are going to be fine. They will make the adjustments on the back end. But the, the people that they're negotiating with, they want to obviously get the film industry back and healthy. But they aren't going to do it to the detriment of the film industry. And so they're willing to sit down and just be like, what y'all want to do? Okay. We got all the money in the world. We good. We good over here. What about you guys? You guys need to get back to work? And see, that's going to be the issue. So it's going to be real interesting to see how uh, all of this shakes itself out. Uh, but yeah, we're not out of the woods when it comes to these strikes. But yeah, and ultimately, again, this is just what it comes down to. All right. Yeah. Like uh, Jerry Seinfeld says, man, uh, the movie business is over. OK. All right. And it's because of this. Yeah. The cultural hierarchy. They just don't dominate the space of entertainment the way they used to in culture. You know, now it's about anime. Anime is taking off video games. Video games are taking off. Viral videos on YouTube, like that's what people are looking at and on TikTok and other forms of social media. That's what people are looking at when it comes to their entertainment options. The movie business, all right, as we know it is over. Now, my opinion, it's 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 evolving. It's changing. And these studios that can be adaptable, all right, that can adjust on the fly. All right. The independent filmmakers that can move quickly, that aren't going to be sagged down by a lot of Hollywood corpo bureaucracy, those guys are going to be just fine. I think those guys are going to kind of change up what Hollywood was into what Hollywood is going to be. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but that's how I see things moving forward, is that Hollywood is adapting, it's changing, it's evolving. And those that can take advantage of this rapidly changing environment, they're going to be fine. All right. But you guys let me know what y'all think about this situation. Jump down in the comments. Give me your thoughts and opinions on that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.